What in the world? Welcome back to the channel. You know, a refractor telescope focuses by turning this knob and moving the focuser tube out or in. What's going on is that the knob has a little pinion gear on it that is spinning and pushing against a rack of gear teeth that are on the bottom of the focuser tube. Unfortunately, the gears on this rack part of the system are easily stripped, and this causes a dead spot when trying to focus. This type of damage is actually very common, and I suspect that a lot of telescopes have made their way to the landfill because of it. The number one cause of this damage is from the telescope falling over while the focuser tube is extended. I had this happen to me once during a star party when it was exceptionally windy, and on that day I had a very light refractor telescope that blew over. In this video, I'm going to show you an easy, cheap fix using just a file and some food grade tubing. Let's get to work. All right, so this focuser assembly is one that I pulled. Wait a second, what's this doing here? What's this doing here? All right, so this focuser assembly is one that I removed from a broken telescope. Let's remove the eyepiece. It's only held into the telescope tube with these three screws here. So as you can see, this one has a dead spot. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't spin when the pinion's right here. That's because some of the teeth are stripped. This long, flat uh, row of teeth is called the rack. And inside here is the pinion. Let's take a look at it. There we go. See the pinion. Now the pinion just turns on that rack and moves it in and out. Uh, this rack and pinion system is actually very similar to the steering mechanism used in automobiles. Now when this fell and struck the ground, the metal teeth that are on this pinion gear actually stripped the gear a little bit. You can see it right there. This was not too bad. I've seen much worse. And that's where the dead spot is. So when the pinion is trying to roll across that area, it just stops. Now to explain how we're going to fix this, let me show you a drawing. All right, so here's the pinion, here's the rack, here's the focuser tube. This is a healthy working system, but ours is not like that. Ours has some of these teeth removed. Basically, we have uh, a section where it's ground out like that, where there's no teeth there. So we're going to remove the rest of these teeth. We're just going to file them all down. Now, we're going to file this down to the point where it becomes level with the lowest point of where the teeth are currently broken off. Now this may not be basically at the root of the tooth. It may actually only be halfway down the teeth, depending on the level of damage that is on your rack. So I'm going to take a file and I'm gonna file down all these teeth until I reach the lowest part of the current damage. So let's go ahead and do that. I should mention that sometimes these racks are made of metal, uh, held on with a screw at each end. In that case, you can use a grinding wheel to remove the remaining teeth, or you can even remove the entire rack altogether, but be sure to leave the ends in place so that the focuser tube doesn't fall out the end while you're turning the knobs. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please push the like button. Now next up, we need access to the pinion gear itself. So. I need to remove one of these knobs. What is that noise? Someone's got squeaky brakes. Next up, we need to get access to this pinion gear. So I'm gonna need to remove one of these knobs. Now it's not always obvious how to get these off. Sometimes there's a retaining screw hidden under one of these labels, or sometimes in this case, it's just screwed on. So there we go. So with that knob removed, I'm going to go to the next step, which is to cut off just a little bit of this food grade tubing. It's not much, maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe even less. All right. Now we need to squeeze this over the pinion. And I have to admit, sometimes this is a pretty tight fit. You might need a little screwdriver to get it over there. Top tip. 
If you put this tubing in warm water first, it makes it easier to put it onto the pinion gear. There we go. Put the knob back on. Now, let's try to put this back together. In theory, this will just sit right in there. Unfortunately, as is often the case, every telescope is unique and I need to actually file away this hole to give this space because now the roller is slightly too large to fit in there. So I'm gonna get a little file and make this hole a little bit larger. There we go. That did the trick. Let's go ahead and reassemble. This just sits in there. Oops. Sets right there. Put the cover back on. I should say that um, depending on your situation, if the tubing is pretty thick, you may actually need to basically grind out the middle of this cover so that the, the tubing itself isn't rubbing on the cover as well as the rack. Let's give it a try. Look at that. Good as new. Because this is now a friction-based assembly, we've in a way created a Crayford focuser. Now, if you've never heard the strange tale behind how this was invented, go ahead and click on this video over here. If you found this video useful, please push the like button. And until next time, clear skies, everybody.